Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I want to talk about five mistakes that builders make that can potentially destroy your deck. And the first one that I'm going to talk about is your improper footing size. If you don't make your footings the right size for the deck you're building, that can be a deadly mistake. Basically, you need to know what you're loading onto that footing. Most uh, second story decks, right? they have to hold a little bit more load than a ground level deck will. So you just can't go buy a specific footing block at a home center and expect that it's gonna work. You need to really know, is that footing gonna hold up long-term for the life of the deck? So you really need to check with a structural engineer for some of these calculations. I'm not a mathematician. I get people that contact me every week on the internet through our webpage. My answer is always gonna be to every single one of you, check with your local structural engineer because that's the person that's qualified. And yes, you're gonna have to pay, but when it comes to legal advice that may kill you, I prefer to leave it to a professional, okay? I am not a professional engineer. I just know over the years what my engineer will specify for my particular area, okay? so. Footings is number one. So you can see right here, this is a helical pile. Helical piles are designed to withstand a lot of weight. They can hold up to 30,000 pounds, depending on the size of the helical pile and how much foot pounds of torque you have when you are finished installing a helical pile. So we use a lot of helical piles. If we're not using helical piles, we pour concrete. But because our state has raised the minimal pounds per square foot that we have to build to to 60 pounds per square foot live load. That meant that our standard footing almost tripled in size. So that's why I've gone to helical piles because we have had to end up pouring a lot more concrete. I'd say two and a half times the amount to qualify for that 60 pound per square foot live load. So I was like, enough of this, we're gonna go to something else. And that's why we chose helicals. Doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes we have to pour, and then you have to have a specific size footing, depending on the weight of the deck, how much each post needs to hold, so on and so forth. So footings are a really important step and making sure that your deck is gonna last a long time. With that being said, the next thing that I think a lot of people make a mistake in is beam sizing. You can see this beam's been covered and sealed, but it's a, actually an engineered glue lamb to span in between these two posts. The post span between these two posts is about 16 feet. You can't span 16 feet with traditional lumber. Uh, to code. It just won't work. So you got to have a specific size beam specced out by somebody that's qualified, which is not me. I pay a guy to tell me, yep, this is the size beam you need. This will work. So with that being said, beams are another thing that you need to make sure that you know what you're doing. There are beam span charts on the internet. There's different beam size calculators on the internet that you can find to help you specify the size beam that you need. It also depends on, are you attaching to the house? Is there a tributary load? Is there some other factors? How far are your joists spaced apart? Do you have a cantilever past your beam? This is all information that you need to consider when you're calculating beam sizes. We have torn out hundreds of decks where the beams have overspanned, they're spongy, they're sagging, or they bounce when you walk on the deck. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, this is way overspanned. And people think, that ought to do it. This'll, this is going, no, this'll never go anywhere but they really don't know because they're not educated on lumber sizing. Okay, so we have footings, beam span, and then right after that goes joist span. So you gotta make sure that your joists are sized properly for the length that you're spanning them. If you're spanning longer lengths, you need to either go up in size or decrease the center spacing of your joist or both, depending on what you have. Now, what's cool about the product we're using here, this is outdoor aluminum. It's uh, made in Australia and it's being distributed in the United States uh, here pretty quick. And with a 12 inch joist span, I can span 15 foot six from the house to my beam Beam, which is a really awesome length to be able to span when you're doing decks with a minimal seven inch thickness. We call it a two by eight, but it's close to seven inches thick. We just did a video, check out that video about why I'm choosing aluminum over standard conventional wood framing. Now, okay, I know you're gonna say, doctor, 
how come you have a wood post and a wood beam when you're doing an aluminum deck? Well, because we only wanted two posts on this deck, we couldn't do aluminum beams because they don't have one yet that'll span 20 plus feet, or I think I'm 16 or 18 feet in between posts. Let's check it out, let's see. Okay, I said 16 feet originally, so we are about 16 feet. And then we have about a three foot cantilever. The deck's over 22 feet. So it's a little, it's between 22 and 23 feet. So we have about three feet cantilever past the posts on each side. Another thing that can kill you if you don't do it properly is gonna be your railing. Railings have to be built to code. They have to be able to withstand 200 pounds of force when leaned on or pushed against or falling and tripping into or anything like that. So you have to have, make sure you have a good engineered rail system like this one by Regal Ideas. Uh, and again, for staircases and that kind of thing, you gotta make sure you have a grabbable handrail that's gonna withstand and hold up to the code requirement of the railing, all right? So you cannot have more than a four inch gap anywhere on the rail system, and that includes between your risers and the bottom rail of this here. The, the rule is, if you have a standard cutout set of stairs, then you cannot pass more than a six inch sphere through that area on the stairs. But as far as the pickets go, you cannot be able to pass a four inch sphere through here, like a ball, we'll say, or a baby's head or something like that. So you don't want baby's heads getting stuck in between your railing. If you put the pickets too far apart, that exactly can happen. So that's another thing that could be deadly is if you don't have the proper attachment to the deck or if you don't have the proper spacing on your pickets, that can be a really bad thing. And if you're having a building inspection, that can fail. So definitely make sure that your railing's up to snuff, up to code, and that you have the proper installation of rails for your deck. All right, now we're gonna get into the most deadly and improperly installed thing that you can do on a deck that has killed more people than anything else that I've talked to you about. And that has to do with the ledger board on the house. So let's go over here and check it out. So regardless if it's wood, aluminum, whatever, most decks have to have a ledger board. The ledger board is a piece of material that you stick to the house before you start hanging all your joists and anchors and all the stuff that you're doing to hang the joists. You gotta make sure that the ledger is attached properly to the house. You can see right here above my tape measure that we have Fasten Master ledger locks installed in between all of our bracketry. So we have two every 12 inches, which is spec by our engineer. Normally we would have them closer together in a, a staggered formation, but instead we just have two every 12 inches because that met the code requirement. But you definitely want to check. I've seen so many decks where there's been a problem where uh, there might, let's just say you have a brand new deck built and the guys didn't use the proper ledger attachment, and you have a party, you have 20 people over, um, Uncle Billy Bob and some neighbor are fighting downstairs, and so all the people run to the end of the deck and they stop to see what's going on. And when they stop, the inertia pulls the deck away from the house, and then it goes like this, and then everybody goes like this, and that's how people die. So improper ledger attachment it's the number one reason of why people die for deck building. And then along with that, if you don't have proper flashing, that can also corrode, erode, rot out the side of the house and make the ledger attachment weak and fall off. There is one thing that we've done, I'll show you guys real quick, that's kind of a code in our code requirement in our uh, neck of the woods, is we had to put on these uh, strong tie DTT onesies right here. And what these do, the, I think these are DTT 2Zs actually. These actually go through a piece of all thread. This piece of all thread has the exact same type of bracket attached on the inside of the house. And then this piece is attached to the joist. So this deck cannot fall away from the house. The ledger cannot in an earthquake because we get a lot of earthquakes where we're located in our area. And we're trying to keep the ledger from separating from the house or pulling away from the house. So that all thread that goes through is attached to the floor joist in the house, so it cannot pull away. And we actually only are required to have two of those type of anchors, but since we already had the all thread out, we did four on this particular deck. So it doesn't matter what kind of earthquake, it should not fall. So just a little tip for you, they make another bracket called a DTT onesie where you're actually 
um, mounting into the wall plate, the top of the wall plate, the studs come up like this. The studs come up like this. There's a wall plate right here. Now I'm gonna turn it this way. And then you screw into that top plate of the wall and that'll help keep things from pulling away. You have to have four of those per deck if you use that style as well. Okay guys, so there you go. The most uh, failed points on a deck, footings, beams, joists, ledger, and flashing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did or you learned something, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. And thanks for watching this video. Have a great day.